today we are going to just summarize what are the preparatory activities for a in service analysis of a jacket structure uh, which includes several of them listed down basically from jacket geometry member size selection direction of uh, waves and environmental loading hydrodynamic coefficients basic loads and the combination of them the coexistence of various loads at any point of the service life of the structure and then the interaction of the structure with the soil the foundation systems then selection of analysis method whether you will select a suitable uh, linear method or non linear method dynamic analysis uh, time <coughs> time history analysis or frequency domain depends on class of structure for example fixed structure mostly either you will go for uh, static or dynamic analysis you may not actually perform uh, most of the time dynamic analysis except if the structure is very slender but for floating structures you may actually require dynamic analysis for almost all cases because the response is going to be slightly different so that's where the class of structure will determine what type of analysis you will require to perform and then when you are trying to do this analysis how you incorporate the dynamic effects basically the uh, the interaction between the dynamic load and the structure uh, response then finally we come to design of foundation ultimately the structure has to transfer the loads into the ground if it is a fixed structure if it is a floating structure it has to respond by sufficient buoyancy and also anchor to the seabed by means of mooring lines so these components needs to be sufficiently designed with adequate factor of safety which i think we will discuss about this in one of the class what is factor of safety why do we need it in fact we will we'll go into elaborate discussion on that and then finally once you complete the system analysis break down the system into several sub components like you will see some pictures later on you can design each element of the system and then the assembly of those elements become a complete system for that structure which needs to behave safely during its lifetime and then we'll see also in what respect we will allow the stresses to be slightly increased or decreased depending on the situation for example if it is a regular occurring event on a daily basis or a yearly basis then it's going to be like a <clears throat> you cannot take high risk that means you will allow lower allowable stresses but if the activity for example a 100 year storm is going to occur every 100 years later or every 100 years return period then what you see here you can take a slightly increased risk instead of designing for conventional process so this basically the allowable stress modifier is to incorporate the risk levels that you want to take higher the risk that you will increase allowable stresses that uh, normally you allow so in the design process you will make a decision whether to allow for increased stresses or reduced stresses depending on whether the activity or the load effects is going to be the return period is smaller or higher so this whole process is called in service because the structure has to be designed for the full period of the design life during which the structure is subjected to several cases of loads it can exist in different forms combination of them and make sure that we design for it so the the first activity is the decision making on the geometry i think over the last 6 to 8 classes six classes at least we have seen various pictures various arrangements for a typical fixed structure which you could have seen that it varies depending on various parameters just not one or two quite a number of parameters i have just listed down few of them here which may not be exhaustive but at least will give you an idea that these are some of the important points that will decide how the jacket will look like the jacket geometry depends on the space requirements for the top sides and the water depth i think is very easy to now understand the larger the footprint of the top sides you will definitely require a bigger jacket very easy to to understand and the water depth the deeper is the depth of water you could see that the base requires to be larger so i think that that's exactly the idea these two parameters 
as a priority, you just need to just look at these two first before going anywhere else. Because for a 100 meter water depth, you may actually have a base of 50 meter by 50 meter, which gives you a stability during installation as well as during service. But if it is 1000 meter water depth, imagine what kind of base is required. So, we need to decide whether jacket is suitable. Even if it is suitable, it could be possibly difficult to imagine the size and the installation. So, so far I think I mentioned about uh, 675 meter water depth. I think if you look at the, the net or in the, the literature, 675 meter water depth jackets have been installed. So, imagine what could be the size of the base, it is very large, almost 160 meter. So, you could see that water depth plays a major role irrespective of the top sides. Even the top side is quite small, does not matter because ultimately the jacket needs to perform during its service life due to environmental loading. But of course, they go in tandem, top sides, layout, footprint requirement and the water depth play a major role in deciding what size of jacket. The next item is, is basically the method of installation. In fact, this, uh, the point number 2, most of the jackets you will see either 6 leg, uh, 4 leg or 8 leg. 6 legs very rarely we use. In fact, one of the jackets just now we are doing is a 6 leg jacket specifically to optimize because it neither fits into 4 leg nor fits into 8 leg. So, you go for a 6 leg, but of course, there are some complications. But conventionally, people use 4 leg or 8 leg, which is uh, very easy to manipulate the installation. The next item in the whole process of geometry selection is method of installation. There are four cases, in fact, I have just uh, listed down. Either the jacket is lift installed, I think by this time you should have understood what is lift installed and launch installed. Lift installed is the jacket is lifted off from the barge and then placed into water, just a transfer or launch installed is basically slided into sea water by some means externally giving push or by tilting the barge. I think that terminology you should get understanding. So, by doing this we have got two activities in a slightly different way which require the geometry to be adapted according to it. So, if you look at this picture, you see this picture the jacket lift installed have a configuration does not require any special arrangement for skidding or for sliding. Whereas, the right side picture you see here, it has got a special arrangement basically some extra stiffening or so called extra members or braces are added in such a way that during sliding jacket is safe. Whereas, when you come to the legs, left side, you see the legs are strengthened according to the load transfer because this is being lifted at 4 points. So, your thinking must go in that direction that whichever the method of installation, the structure geometry changes. You could see that these extra members are not there, this whatever you see here like a small bridge which is not there, which is actually supporting the jacket during skidding process. Now, if you go back also the geometry of the jacket can change depending on how the top side is installed. If the top side is installed in modular fashion means you split the top side into several sub modules and install in top, it could look like this. But if you install the bar, you know the, the top sides using float over, you see on the right side the complete top side is one piece. So, the jacket geometry completely changed. So, that gives you an idea how is the methodology of installation could manipulate the jacket to a very great extent. So, there is four cases lift installed jacket, launch installed jacket and then we have lift installed modular top sides and float over installed single piece top sides. So, these four could manipulate the jacket into any configuration that uh, what you have seen just now of four of them, which means that uh, you have to pay great attention to what the contractor is proposing irrespective of what you need out of this. You may need a configuration of a jacket from top sides footprint point of view or the uh, layout point of view and the water depth point of view, but you should consult the contractor who is installing that installation method can just simply change whatever you have come up. So, it influences so much. 
The last one, basically the uh, soil conditions. I think this is very important to understand. In fact, this is true for any structure on the earth. As long as the soil condition does not permit, you may have to change the foundation system. Once you change the foundation system, your configuration of the stru structure also have to be adapted accordingly. For example, you have decided that only main pile, main pile will be adapted for your jacket. I think you, you should know now by this time what is main pile, what is skirt pile. So, if you have only main pile, what will happen? The pile has to go as deep as required by the design. If the soil conditions are very weak, you may end up taking the pile to few hundred meters, which may not be possible to install. So, what will happen is you may put more legs instead of four legs, you may actually make it eight legs to distribute the loads to many points because you decided that you will only keep main pile. So, main pile means more number of legs or if you allow for a skirt pile, you can keep the four legs, but add additional skirt piles to the leg locations. So, you could see that soil conditions is going to influence greatly the type of structure. In other words, if you go back one step backward, you know, if you look at a soil condition for a piled jacket type of structure, it is definitely not the hard rock. For example, in some occasions you may find that if you go to villages or even uh, seabed, you will see that some places the rock is at the surface level. I think you might have seen in many, many places. So, in such type of locations, if you imagine if you have to install a jacket, it is impossible. You cannot drive a pile, is not it? So, you may have to look for alternative foundation system. So, which will work? For sure, you can work, work with a gravity based type of structures, which you simply place the structure on top, you do not need a pile foundation. The stability of the system is arrived by its own weight, is not it? Vice versa, if you have the soft soil, do not imagine of or think of putting a gravity based foundation, because the whole thing will settle. So, you could see that the soil conditions can change completely the structure idea itself. The, the thinking has to change depending on what is the, that is why you should have a very clear understanding of soil mechanics. If you would like to design a suitable offshore structure, you should go through a rigorous understanding of what is the layers, what soil condition exists at the site, so that the selected concept will definitely work. Because after all, ultimate purpose is to make sure the structure does not deform outside the permissible limits and the foundation does not fail, because both of them is as critical as what we think. So, the jacket geometry, I think I have just listed down four of them, but you have to keep thinking what other parameters will influence and summarize for your specific project. So, I think these pictures you have seen already few times before, but the purpose of this I have just placed it here to just give you an understanding that it could have impact on the geometry. Similarly, this picture you have seen already. Now, what we just need to make sure that after seeing those jacket framing or jacket model, what exactly we are looking at, what, are, what is the meaning of model? I think most of you might have already, uh, I think we discussed in the last class also regarding computation of internal forces on the member. Typically, take a beam, what you have is the, the bending moment. I think most of you might have studied in applied mechanics, shear forces, what else? Axial force may not be there in a beam bending, is not it? Unless you have restraint in the apply a horizontal load. But for a column, you have an axial force, maybe bending moment, depending on whether the load is acting eccentrically. But if you have a beam and column combined, you may have all components of forces, axial force, bending moments in both directions, torsional moment, shear in both directions. So, you could see that if you see this picture or this picture in fact, you could classify them either beam or column very difficult, because this is subjected to three dimensional forces. So, it could be a potential beam column uh, element member. What I mean the meaning of element member is one component of the structure. You, you should get an idea. You have so many of them, no? 
hopefully all of you are uh, able to see the, the terminology because uh, in offset we use element member all represent one part of the structure for example this from here to here is a single member which is nothing but a part of the structure now each one of them will be subjected to different magnitude of loads due to external forces from environment and gravitational loads so we need to evaluate this and then take that and design it the primary purpose of the course is for that we have a system analysis and then from the system analysis each of the element is supplied with specific uh, internal loads and then the internal loads will need to be treated appropriately to arrive at the applied stresses and then apply the codal permissions or provisions to find out what is the allowable stresses i think that's that simple technique so in the modeling what exactly we supposed to model should we model everything or should we model only something what we need to just understand all structural members what is the meaning of structural member the meaning of structural member is is to make sure you get a clear understanding because every part of the structure is a structural element but whether they actually contribute to the structural stiffness or its reduction or increase in the response when you apply loading needs to be understood some of them may only attract loads some of them may contribute to stiffness some of them may not contribute to stiffness so what we need to decide is whichever the part in this structure contribute to stiffness reduction or increase in the the response characteristics of the structure needs to be modeled for example we have a, a portal frame you may have two columns one beam imagine if you don't model the beam and only just model the column what will happen it will not behave a portal frame it will become two cantilever columns isn't it so that's exactly we need to see when you look at such a big structure we need to model and simulate the behavior together to include every aspect of stiff, stiffness of the structure so that's what i meant here basically all structural members of the jacket including legs braces what is the brace brace is all those members what you see and the piles above and below sea bed because the pile is also above inside the legs and also below and the deck structure the superstructure should include everything which ever contribute to stiffness non structural elements like for example you may have a handrail i think you every building structure will have a handrail i don't think anybody needs to simulate the handrail because handrail is is a functional requirement rather than structural strength purpose is only a protection for other purpose accurate modeling of pile soil interaction is required because after all the structure is going to deform due to applied loads and the deformation characteristics depends on how firm the structure is fixed to the ground isn't it the stronger the soil the deflection will be less lesser the deflection for sure you will have lesser deflection means the bending moment will be less and associated stresses will be less so that means the foundation conditions have to be simulated accurately that means the understanding of the soil condition is very very vital to the whole system analysis all the eccentricities in the connections needs to be modeled which you will come to know when we were when we go into the tubular joint design at that time we will go more details basically the eccentric connections could introduce additional moments you know then the hydrodynamic loading on all the secondary um requirements for the system for example you may have a cathodic protection for the jacket you may install few anodes we will learn about what is anode in the later part of this uh, this course so you attach these additional uh, so called appurtenances which only protect the structure they don't actually uh, perform as a structural stiffer element that means they will attract loads as long as you put this element inside water the wave loads will come but they won't actually give you any additional strength so this needs to be taken little uh, carefully that you attract the loads but then the stiffness will not be contributed by them 
So, like this there are so many items in this uh, jacket that you may actually consider weight, you may consider the buoyancy, you may consider the hydrodynamic loading, but not part of the structural simulation. They will only be burden for us, but not as a support. So, this just only few of them I have listed down to give an example what is the meaning of modeling technique. I think this is a very common sense even in uh, uh, any process simulation you should only look at what is contributing to the primary purpose of the process and what are considered as the secondary uh, requirements. They only contribute to the load effects whereas, the strength effect is not there. So, you should differentiate between these two and then simulate accordingly. When it comes to uh, design of offshore structures against uh, environmental loading, I think we have already discussed enough by this time you, you should have in your mind that the uncertainty prevails a lot in the decision making of loading and its directions, especially when you are looking at offshore structure in open sea condition prediction of sea state itself is a high uncertainty several techniques in fact we actually do a measurement at site for a 2 years 3 years 5 years you may get a better understanding but nobody has the time to go and sit down and put the instruments and measure it for 5 years then come back and do the project nobody has the time once you find an aisle at a particular location need to develop as soon as possible to make money immediately is not it and that is exactly the idea. You may get only a year or less than a year to do any environmental study at the site. You may actually do a 3 months survey, 3 months uh, measurement data. Using that 3 months data imagine you need to design the structure for 25 years design life. So, you need to predict what may happen for this particular location for the next 25 years what could be the possible maximum wave height, possible maximum current, possible maximum wave period and the directions of those parameters. Whether the wave is going to come always from south maybe yes, if you ask the fishermen they will tell you most of the season the wave is only this direction. So, what we normally do is you go and ask and study the historical data, collect the recent information and then correlate them and try to come up with a mathematical model which could predict possibly the next 100 years what could be the potential wave direction, wave heights and all the parameters associated with it. And this is how everywhere the design of offshore structure is done. Nobody is going to measure for 100 years and then come back and then install the structure after 100 years. That will be the best way, but then that also gone because the, the 100 years data what you have measured becomes past is not it what you need is for future. So, always this uncertainty cannot be removed with respect to offshore system performance analysis. So, always you will rely on computational model simulations and then the predictions based on probability theory. So, there could be potential failure of your theory fail to predict correctly some cases may happen you know if it is even 1 percent of your assumptions are wrong you may actually fail the structure. So, that is where we need to play a, a critical role in decision making of these parameters according to the location. Now, in this process some of the guides actually like API I think I have to introduce you API is, is a code which we will go into detail one of the classes is an American code American Petroleum Institute devised a code for design of fixture offshore platforms. Very similar to you might have seen codes IS codes you I think most of you are familiar no Indian codes Bureau of Indian standards similar. So, they give us suggestions as a minimum consider this many wave directions based on experience actually you do not need a technical justification for that if you go through it is a layman exercise. So, basically if you see this picture go to the, the picture here is a square base frame simply installed on top of seabed. 
you could easily see that four legs, four orthogonal directions, four diagonal directions. Orthogonal is 0, 180, 90 and 270. The orthogonal directions give you some type of response. We will just see that what, you, what exactly is the idea behind, why are we doing this? You know, after all, every element in the structure has to be subjected to the loads from environment, also load from the gravity and the, the superstructure. So, if you imagine if you have 0 degree load, the pile number 1, let me just say 1, 2, 3 and 4. I think, hope I explained the other day. Did I explain about this wave direction decoupling of forces? No, maybe. We will try to do that today. Basically, if you see four uh, piles, let me just draw a picture. If I have four columns, something like this, and maybe the spacing between the columns is typically yes. You can have because it is a square square base and the tower in terms of maybe something like this. This is your seabed. the wave load on the structure is going to act something like this. So, 0 degree is going to produce something like this at a height of say h, is not it. So, if you look at this picture, you could easily find one simple conclusion due to force f acting in this direction can produce compressive force on these legs is not it and tensile force on these legs depending on the magnitude of this force is not it and the height at which it is and the spacing of the the more the spacing tension may not come and also the the magnitude of reaction is going to be very simple. So, this decoupling can be easily found out depending on So, if I want to find out what is the force on these two legs, you can find out F is not it. F times h will be the overturning moment divided by two legs in compression, two legs in tension divided by spacing. Hope all of you can understand the simple mechanics. Now, if you look at the diagonal direction, so what happens? The moment is acting with respect to the diagonal joining the opposite two corners. And when you look at the compression force C 1 on this leg is going to be how you calculate basically F 1 times corresponding height wherever it is acting divided by only one pile is going to be, but the distance between this and this about 1.4, is not it, but not two piles are active, only one pile is in tension, the other pile is in. Now, you could imagine just simply changing the direction of the wave, it could be same magnitude of wave height, wave forces, but just changing from one direction to 
other influences the forces on the legs which is most important because the find the foundation design depends on the load transfer because you are going to design the foundation here. So, that means the direction by which the wave is applied is as crucial as the structure design because if you did not include this direction for example, you might have been happy that the pile loads are only this much this may produce lesser loads than this. That means, between 0 degree and this 45 degree whatever we were thinking there may be other wave directions which may influence this or higher pile load might be there depending on the geometry of the system. Just now I have given you an example that just for a square base it is in this way. So, depending on the type of structure if it is a rectangular base not necessary that only 45 degree is going to give you maximum forces. So, this is what we have done here is the message is maximize the structure response. It is not that we want to purposely increase the response, we would like to find out what will be the maximum response if wave direction changes from 0 degree to 45 degree, which you have to ask yourself whether the direction will change yes or no. If it is yes, then you do this. If it is a perfect no, for example, 45 degree will never ever come. When it will happen? For example, you have a east coast, you have a jacket installed in the east coast say few kilometers, say 10 kilometers away. Can you expect a wave from west? Definitely no, is not it? West direction is shielded by the land. So, such questions you should ask whether the waves can come, yes, waves may not come. What is the probability of that? Maybe, but perfectly yes, it will never come then. So, you should ask and you should study the location of the, the place where the structure is installed, then you get the. So, wave direction is just a common man uh, understanding of structure design response hope you get the point. So, basically I think you should you should spend some time thinking about why are we doing this. The only reason why we do this is basically the uncertainty involved in evaluation of directions, but what happened over the last so many uh, years every field wherever oil is found mostly uh, number of uh, measurement data simulation data including the recorded storms give a reasonable uh, estimate of directions over a period of time. So, we normally use that because you are not finding oil suddenly from somewhere. Most of the oil fields in the recent uh, say at least 20 years has been an expansion of existing oil field. You find one and then drill another one in the same vicinity. So, in that sense may be not a big deal because we got enough data to decide nowadays. Uh, what could be potential wave directions. Now, this, this simple question is the jackets are either 4 leg, 8 leg or 6 leg or 3 legs, but we never have a jacket of a circular base. I, I, at least I have not seen it, but maybe there is an occasion where you may have a circular base or an octagonal base or a hexagonal base then these recommendations given by API are not valid. So, you keep in your mind that not every time I will apply this 8 directions or 45 degree cases. This is specifically for a, a geometry which is rectangular in base whatever may be the number of legs it could be 4 leg or 8 leg does not matter, but the structural configuration is this base. Suppose if you have a floating structure not necessary that it is always rectangle it can be a circular then do not apply that principle here. You could actually have a different type of mooring configuration. So, you have to find out what could be the potential uh, wave direction that will actually maximize the response. So, you have to think 
not simply apply somebody have told me eight directions i will simply for everything and uh, uh, apply this principle you have to think about how the response could be become maximum because that is more critical for us because the structure will fail if we forgot to or not considered in the evaluation okay so i think that gives you an uh, the thrust of thinking required for decision making on the wave directions this is a typical uh, sketch for a rectangular jacket where we in fact even consider a deviation from the diagonal so the diagonal could produce maximum but also a deviation of plus minus theta 1 degrees which gives you simple idea that if that varies the sensitivity of the system could be evaluated i think we have spent enough time on the loading no don't don't have to spend any time just listed down all the loads that we uh, already have discussed st structural loads facility loads fluid loads live loads and all the environmental loads and the last one is the seismic load due to its own weight and the ground acceleration generates the inertia loads so in the model when you are making a three dimensional model of the structure you should have the sufficient information to generate the loads basically its density isn't it and its geometry should be modeled according to what is the the actual geometry or the cross section and then any additional weights that is not contributing to stiffness for example the floor slab you may have a structural slab but also have a non structural portion where is just a topping it's like a, is a burden over burden or we sometimes call it superimposed loads in civil engineering terminology the loads due to various uh, furnitures floor finishes wall finishes they are all just only a burden to the structure needs to be simulated appropriate density to be taken appropriate variations to be taken you know very important that you assume a 50 mm uh, floor finish but how sure is only 50 mm so you may consider a increased percentage sometime go higher facility i think we have discussed earlier mechanical electrical all discipline which involve in the oil and gas production you will have uh, uh, many types of equipments involved there needs to be of course they don't contribute to the stiffness of the structure they are all the weights contribute to the load and nothing else we cannot take any of the functional equipment as the part of the stiffness drilling loads basically um, during the drilling work is going on what really happens is the weight of the drilling rig itself will be supported on the structure if it is a self supporting uh, jacket that means the drilling rig is on top instead if you have a jack up rig drilling then there is no question of drilling loads coming here because all the drilling loads will be taken by jack up itself what else will come the continuous supply of drill material you know the drilling strings going into the ground i think i have mentioned about the depth of drilling what is the depth of drilling typically for oil and gas about 3 to 6 km so that much depth it has to reach so you have a drill string going down so the supply of those material will come so that will also be added load into the structure during the only time of drilling how it is done it's basically set back and cook the hook load is nothing but the hanging on the drill rig itself set back is the storage so you see here a typical uh jack up uh is 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 drilling in the vicinity where already a jacket is installed so from this picture you could see the the sheer size of the drilling jack up with respect to a small well platform so much of facilities are required for example if you want to put all these facilities on this platform itself this platform will become very large and the drilling is normally done for a few months in the starting of the project so why to overburden this whole thing on to the permanent structure which is not required so that's why this jackups become very useful the jackups go do the drilling and then relocate to another place so that's why you see here this jackup rig 
carry so much of equipment during drilling, the details of which we will be talking about Jacobs in the last session of uh, this course. We have uh, included a new topic only for this batch, Jacob drilling, previous batch it was not there. So, we will talk about this Jacob in very detail, how the operation and how the drilling is done. And uh, so, basically the Jacobs are used for shallow water about less than 120 meter. It used to be 50, 60 meters, but now the latest generation Jacobs could even drill at 100 meters water depth. So, what is normally done is when you have a pre drilling of the wells, you have uh, Jacobs arriving at the site without any structure at site, it does the drilling and go away, and the uh, capping is done at the seabed. So, that means this is only used for appraisal purpose or the e exploration planning purpose when the structure is not there. But when the structure is there, then you do the drilling after the installation of the jacket. And basically, both sometimes we use uh, jackups, sometimes we use uh, floating systems for pre drilling, but post drilling you cannot use because you have to drill at the site at the jacket location. So, you have to use the jackup, we will see tomorrow.